if Alma had some truly awful travel horror stories. They're the ones that you break out at parties to shock and awe those around you. Some might even be so scary you keep them to yourself. Well, I don't believe in hiding the not-so-pretty side of travel. So I asked some of my travel blogging friends to share their travel horror stories with us. You'll read about a near-miss with a bear, contracting a mystery disease in Peru, accommodations that don't exist, and more. One thing is true for all of these stories. You'll be glad they didn't happen to you. I've had my fair share of travel fails and scary travel stories over the years. But some of these are so out of this world that it's hard to imagine how they kept traveling. Thankfully, these stories have uplifting endings and tips to help you avoid experiencing these vacation horror stories for yourself. One, a travel horror story in Morocco. I've had many scary travel experiences and travel horror stories throughout my years as a solo traveler. There was the time I dove into a freezing ocean to swim with wild dolphins, only to come face to face with a dangerous fur seal. Or the time I spent $400 on taxis in Dunedin due to an invisible bus. This travel horror story occurred when I was spending a month in Morocco during my gap year in Europe. I just enjoyed a few weeks in Marrakesh, baking with local women, exploring the city, and experiencing a traditional Moroccan hammam. But it was time to head off to my next destination, Turkey. To get to Turkey, I had to go to the Casablanca airport. Now, I was originally supposed to fly out a week later. I had planned to head to Chef Chawen to visit the Instagram famous Blue City but my mom got nervous after experiencing the woes of being a female in Marrakesh. And I found out it's especially dangerous to climb the Atlas Mountains in winter, so it wasn't entirely her fault. I ended up with three spare days in Casablanca. They were the longest days of my life. The city feels post-apocalyptic. Buildings are half-built, with crumbling concrete clinging to steel frames. There are streets barren of people and covered in a thick sheen of dust. Even the people look haggard as you pass them on your way to the few attractions in the city. I was staying in a Best Western by the train station for ease of access to the airport, and because it was all I could get with my credit card points at the time. There's a rule in Morocco that everyone tells you, don't eat uncooked food. It's because they wash the produce in tap water, which is known for being very bad for you. After one extremely trying day, I went to the hotel restaurant for dinner. My tagine came with an unexpected side salad. Beaten down from the day, fed up with my anxiety and generally starving, I took a bite without thinking. I swallowed and realized my mistake. But it couldn't be that bad, right? I mean, Best Western is an American chain. Surely their employees use American standards for their food. Nope. Within 24 hours, I had the worst case of rocket butt and explosive vomit I've ever experienced thanks to what I'd later learn was a parasite from unclean tap water. And of course, that was the day I needed to fly to Turkey. It was genuinely the second worst flight of my life, after the time I flew with an ear infection. I puked in the check-in lineup after running through my plastic bag supply. There was nowhere to buy a ginger ale or water before boarding the flight at the airport. The poor stewardess couldn't understand why I wanted puke bags before we'd even taken off. The man next to me was visibly cringing as far away from me as possible, but it doesn't end there. Once I arrived in Turkey, I thought the nightmare would be over, until I realized I was a day early for my visa. To enter Turkey, you need a visitor's visa that you can buy online for $75. I had done this months earlier when I'd initially planned to arrive in Turkey. I'd even booked it a week early just in case. It hadn't even occurred to me to check the visa when I'd rescheduled my trip. I was certain I'd be fine. Unfortunately, they won't let you into the country, even if you're green at the gills and are clearly about to pass out in front of them. Come to think of it, that may have been why they didn't want to let me in the country. Thankfully, they have kiosks at the airport to buy a new visa. They weren't working, 
so I had to wait two hours for someone to fix one before I could swipe my credit card, get a new visa, and crawl into a cab to get to the hotel. I wouldn't leave for three days except to go to the hospital. Moral of the travel horror story. Check your visas and don't eat salad in Morocco. 2. The Ultimate Lost Luggage Horror Story by Carrie Hansen from Veg Travel. Has your luggage ever been lost on holiday? Mine has, several times. However, the worst time, and the one that still makes me mad, was at the start of a six-month solo adventure around Southeast Asia. I just traveled with Singapore Airlines from Sri Lanka to Singapore for the second stop of my trip. Little did I know that my backpack, which contained everything I had, hadn't been put on my flight. Frantically searching for help, the best the staff could offer me was to go to my hotel and they would contact me when they traced it. However, as I was backpacking, I didn't have any accommodation booked. I just had my trusty, lonely planet guide and was going to wing it when I arrived. No accommodation meant nowhere to send the bag, and this was before the days of easy access to travel resources online. So, I had to wait. A long time. Five hours to be exact. Enough time to lose my mind. When I finally got the call, I was so elated that it had arrived that I signed the papers without really reading them or checking the bag. It was on a trolley, and it looked fine. Big mistake. When I went to put it on my back, the straps were in tatters, and I had no hope of carrying 22 kilos of belongings for another day, let alone six more months. Naturally, I complained, but I had unknowingly waived my rights by blindly signing for it. In tears and with no other options, I found a shop in the airport that sold a sewing kit and super glue and fixed it. I could just about put it over my back, but it had no support, and it was crippling. I chose to lumber this around for two months before I finally invested in a new backpack, which cost three acts my daily budget. The moral of this travel horror story is not to sign something without reading it. Check to make sure everything is as it should be and bite the bullet and buy a replacement even if it does affect your budget. 3. The Airbnb Scam by Catherine of Tara Let's Anywhere For my first solo international trip, I booked tickets to Maldives. I was very excited and anxious at the same time. I decided that instead of the backpacker's favorite Mafushi Island, I'd stay on Gulhi Island. It's smaller, less crowded, and according to reviews, it had a nice beach. I booked my room there via Airbnb. I chatted with the host about the details, and even reserved a boat tour with other guests in advance. When I arrived in the island, the hotel was closed down. A local approached me and said, It had been closed for two, three months already, and I was not the first guest to find out this way. I didn't know what to do. I could rent a private boat to take me to Mafushi Island, since public transfers were limited. I could stay in Gulhi and find another hotel. Either way would set me back a few hundred dollars, and I was already in a tight budget. The local guy helped me, and we approached every hotel and resort in the island. Everywhere was fully booked, except for the last one. The owner at Silvershade Guesthouse listened to my story, and he was very kind. He invited me to dinner with his staff later that night. Unfortunately, the story does not end here, since I had stomach ache from the unfamiliar food the day after. I skipped going on the boat tour, but my new host took me snorkeling on the best spots in the island, and even showed me the breeding area for baby sharks. He was especially careful to check on me since at that time, I didn't know how to swim properly. I couldn't emphasize how kind and generous the Maldivians are. Even though the Airbnb scam was traumatizing in itself, the kindness and hospitality of the locals I'd witnessed during my trip was enough for me to want to visit there again. Airbnb eventually gave me a refund, but for some reason they did not remove the listing of the hotel that scammed me. All in all, it was a story worth telling, especially as a precaution, but now I can laugh about it. Morale of the Vacation Horror Story Accommodations aren't always reliable.